guys, welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2022 Honda Pilot, courtesy of Apple Honda in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I am in this one today because there are more standard features actually coming for the 2022 Honda Pilot but a higher starting price as well. We'll get to the pricing here in a second, but this of course is Honda's three row SUV competing with the likes of the Toyota Highlander, Hyundai Palisade and Kia Telluride, just to name a few. And so in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering full ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So when it comes to pricing for the 2022 Pilot, let me first start by mentioning there are no LX or EX trim levels for the 2022 model year, which is partly the reason why it's a little bit more expensive than the 2021 Pilot. But nonetheless, EXL trim is going to start at $39,060. Special edition, which is the one we have today, starting at $39,660. Then there is the Touring for $43,620. Elite for $49,120. And lastly, the black edition starting at $50,620. And by the way, for those first three trim levels, that was pricing for the front wheel drive. The other two come standard with all wheel drive, but to add all wheel drive to one of those first three trims, simply add $2,000 to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Pilot is going to be the same. Powering this beast is a 3.5 liter direct injected V6, putting out 280 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 262 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,700 RPM. Power sent to the front wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will of course be testing out in a little bit here, but zero to 60 time coming in at a very impressive 6.2 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 20 in the city, 27 highway for the front wheel drive, 19 city, 26 on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so anyways, before we do that paddle shifter acceleration test here in our pilot, I did want to mention the drive modes. And so there is a drive mode button. It's going to look like a pilot driving over some terrain of some sort located directly behind the D slash S button, which is the drive button. By the way, it is all push buttons to select the gears on this one. P for park, R for reverse, N for neutral, and D for drive, of course. But back to the drive modes, they will include econ, snow, sand, and mud, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well. And I do love that the pilot has a snow mode because we do get quite a bit of that here in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. But anyways, I digress. Let's go ahead and uh, let's push that D slash S button one more time because that is going to kind of give me a sport driving mode, which immediately it did just downshift for me, giving me more power on demand. And let's do a quick little paddle shifter test here first. And let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, so this looks like a good straightaway. Let's go ahead and start in second gear here. Eh. There's a little bit of a delay, but still, I'm glad the paddle shifters are there. And the reason being is because when it's snowing out here in Pennsylvania and you're going down a hill, maybe instead of actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off that hill, you can actually use the paddle shifters to do a little bit of engine braking. So you're less likely to have an accident. So I do appreciate the paddle shifters for that particular reason. However, having said that, they're not the quickest things in the world, but still glad they're there. But anyways, let's now get by full control here to the pilot. And I'm just gonna press that D slash S button and again and now the pilot has full control and let's do a quick little acceleration test here and let's see how quickly we can get this one up to speed all right look at this straight away you guys this looks so nice in three two one go wow good start this thing can go man for a three row suv this thing has plenty of pickup but Again, zero to 60 in 6.2 seconds is among the best in its class. Let me tell you guys that typically you get it approximately seven seconds or a little bit more than that. So 6.2 in a three row SUV, that's dang impressive if I'm being honest, but yeah, plenty of an acceleration. You're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway in this thing, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 13 inch solid rear disc as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes that comes in at 120 feet and let's test the braking feel here 
It's actually perfect. It, it's just fine. It's a little bit on the softer side, but that's to be expected in really any three row SUV. And it's not as bad as most other three row SUVs that I test when it comes to that soft braking feel. So braking feel honestly is plenty fine. And again, 120 feet is plenty respectable, but then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes in these horrible punishing Hanover roads right now. It's actually, it's doing all right. I will say the roads suck. So for that reason, it's kind of upsetting, but still the pilot is handling it plenty fine. So really no issues when it comes to ride quality. As far as steering feel goes, I actually really like it. Most three row SUVs tend to lean on the super loosey goosey side of things. It doesn't give you that instant feedback that I personally enjoy. But with this one, with the Honda Pilot, definitely leans a little bit more towards the heavier side of things at least when it comes to three row SUVs it's nothing crazy but still I appreciate the steering feel here in the Honda Pilot this is definitely more of a driver's three row SUV if I were to compare it to all the other three row SUVs out there at least so I definitely like that and as far as cabin noise goes it is perfectly fine actually it's plenty impressive so I'm driving right now I'm sure you guys can tell that and I'm not getting a whole lot of exterior wind noise like whatsoever coming into the cabin which is quite brilliant you quite often do get that but with the Honda Pilot, you definitely don't. So I definitely like that. And that's due in part because all Honda Pilots actually do get acoustic laminated front glass. And if you were to go with the touring trim level and up, you're actually also going to get acoustic laminated front side glass here on the front doors as well. So I can only imagine the serene cabin in the touring trim level and up because again, we have the special edition and even in our trim level here today, it's excellent if I'm being quite honest, I would even say it's easily on the luxury side of things as far as cabin noise goes. So well done, Honda. I'm very impressed there. Then touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back and I do have this third row headrest up there right now. So that does hinder visibility a little bit, but if you're not using them, you of course can just fold that third row down. So for that reason, visibility is perfectly fine. I would also mention though, if you were to go with the elite or black edition trim levels, you will also get rain sensing windshield wipers, which is pretty darn cool as well. Essentially what that is, is whenever the pilot detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So it's just one less thing you gotta worry about, kind of like automatic headlights, but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Honda Pilot. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Honda Pilot finished in modern steel metallic. In case you were curious of the exterior color name that we had here, let's go ahead and start up front. That front grille is going to differ slightly amongst the trim levels. For example, you're gonna get some black accents if you were to go with the special edition or black edition, of course, then chrome accents essentially for all the other trims. So did wanna point that out to the sides. LED headlights do actually come standard across the board. Well done, Honda, for that. They do, of course, come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark and at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard. Then if you were to go with the touring trim level and up, you will also find full LED headlights, meaning low beam and high beam. That's pretty cool. Little added illumination there. And then the black edition is going to give you some black edition badging found in the front grille then as well. But overall, definitely a nice look. I love the LED fog lights down below coming standard across the board as well. So very good look for the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so now since we are around here to the side, roof rails do come standard on all trim levels. And again, the finish is going to differ though amongst the trim levels. For example, black roof rails, like you're looking at for the special edition and black edition, silver roof rails essentially for all the other trim levels then. But chrome window surrounds do come standard across the board. Body color door handles for the EX and special edition chrome door handles for the touring and elite and then black door handles for the black edition trim level then taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated with integrated turn signals for all trim levels but in addition to that the reverse gear tilt down feature also coming standard across the board you don't always get that usually it's upper trim levels of other manufacturers so that is pretty darn cool there power folding side mirrors then coming with the elite and black edition trim levels but then let's go ahead and take a look at the wheel configuration here 18 inch machine finished alloys coming with the exl 20 inch machine finished alloys for the touring and elite 
and 20 inch gloss black alloys then for the special edition and black edition trims but that pretty much rounds out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back and so now swinging around to the back body colored shark fin antenna found all the way to the top just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light rear window wiper found just below that one of the cool things though led tail lights coming standard across the board i guess it's to be expected because the headlights were led across the board as well but that's pretty cool added illumination so somebody doesn't rear end you of course and just below it all you will actually find a single exhaust outlet tucked away so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around back of the pilot, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate that does come standard for all trim levels. Special edition trim level and up then is going to give you a hands-free power tailgate, meaning if you wanted to, simply just walk up behind it, do a little kick underneath of the rear bumper there, and it is going to automatically open up for you. But there are other ways, of course, there is a button on the key fob itself. There's also a button on the driver's door and a button on the tailgate itself as well. So you got plenty of options there. Once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 16.5 cubic feet behind that third row if that was not enough space of course the third row does fold down bumping it up to 46.8 cubic feet then with all rows folded down that is going to come in at 83.8 cubic feet so plenty of space back there did want to also mention in the cargo area there is cargo lighting there's a couple grocery bag hooks back there as well there is in-floor storage as well which is pretty cool I always like seeing that in SUVs so if then you're wondering where is the spare tire it's actually located up underneath of that rear bumper in case you were curious but love the in-floor storage there and there are some tie down anchors that come standard for all trim levels then as well in the cargo area but then making our way up to that third row legroom that is going to come in at 31.9 inches so for reference I mean even six feet tall this is how much space I have back there a little bit cramped but I can say you could probably move the second row up slightly if you're able to and give the third row passengers a little bit more space then there is rear ventilation though for all trim levels which was nice to find for the third row it's going to be found on the side there as a Opposed to like the ceiling of it so wanted to mention that and you actually have three cup holders on both sides for the third row usually you get two on other SUVs so I like that they gave you three you got an extra cup holder so that's pretty cool so stay thirsty my friends but anyways making our way up to the second row legroom that is going to come in at 38.4 inches so for reference I mean even six feet tall yet again this is how much space I had in the second row there bench seating is going to come with the EXL and special edition trim and then you can find captain's chairs for the touring trim level and up and actually with that touring trim level it could go either way you can get it with bench seating or captain's chairs but anyways dual usb charging ports coming standard for all trim levels but here's the best part for me rear window sunshades also coming standard for all trim levels that is pretty darn cool i love rear window sunshades because i got two little kids and that does of course help keep the sun out of their eyes when the sun is super bright and it's a heck of a lot better the factory option as opposed to the ones that you get from walmart so i was definitely a big fan of that heated rear seats then coming with the touring trim level and up and in addition to that with the touring trim level and up you're also going to get a 10.2 inch rear entertainment screen on the ceiling as well for the rear passenger so you could play blu-rays or connect wirelessly or whatever you want to do so so that's a pretty cool option there too but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the front seats 10-way power driver's seat with power lumbar for all trim levels four-way power adjustable passenger seat then as well leather seating is actually coming standard across the board that is pretty cool ventilated front seats then coming with the elite and black edition trim levels and overall seat comfort was plenty fine I had no issues whatsoever but perhaps my favorite part were these individual little armrests here for both the driver and the passenger it definitely made for a very comfortable place to put my elbows while I was just kind of relaxing and driving there so I like the little individual armrests they work well for this one but now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for every single trim level and if you were to go with the elite or black edition it will be heated then 
as well. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You do have your Honda logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, you do a lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch, and then the circular button that says hold, that is going to be your remote start, which comes standard across the board, along with a push button start also coming standard. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that bright red engine start button located just to the left of the climate control information there. And so once started up, you will find your engine temp all the way to your left, fuel information all the way to your right, and a fairly large digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel there. It gives you a ton of different information. Of course, you have a digital speed readout. It also will kind of show you how you're driving at any given time because there's an upper LED portion that's going to change from green to blue so if you're driving more eco-friendly it's going to be green and vice versa so that's pretty cool too there it's also going to tell you when you need your next oil change you can check out your radio information up there the list goes on there is plenty you could check out so that is pretty darn cool as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here a power moonroof coming standard on every single trim level you gotta love that ambient led lighting coming with the touring trim level and up although it's going to change color depending upon which trim level that you go with if you go with the touring or elite you're going to get blue led ambient lighting but if you go with that black edition you're going to get red LED ambient lighting. So I think that's pretty cool. Overhead sunglass holder with the school bus mirror coming standard on all trim levels. I always think that's pretty cool because then you can kind of spy on the rear passengers. So I like that. Auto zooming rear view mirror with home link controls also coming standard across the board. Well done Honda with all the new standard features. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there's a lot more that comes standard now on the Pilot and I'm a big fan of that. Tri-zone climate control coming standard for all passengers as well meaning driver passenger and rear passengers can all set their own temperatures if they wanted to wireless phone charger coming with the special edition elite and black edition trim so that's going to be located just in front of the cup holder so as long as you have a smartphone that's capable of that you just simply just set it down on there and it's going to wirelessly charge it's pretty cool Overall, as far as interior quality goes, it definitely gets the job done. There's a heck of a lot of soft touch material, which I'm a big fan of, especially on the doors where you rest your elbows. There's a lot of soft touch material there as well. There's a lot of different compartments on the doors too. I wanna to mention that because typically when you're looking at the doors on the inside, there's two tiers, but with the Pilot, there's actually three tiers. You got the bottom area, you got the mid area, and then you got the top area next to the window buttons too. So that is pretty cool. And like I said, wireless phone charger in front of the cup holders, you have a 12 volt power outlet USB be charging port to the right of all the drive buttons you do have dual cup holders there and just behind all of that you have one of the largest center storage areas i think i've ever seen you could fit a heck of a lot of stuff in there and that includes a 12 volt power outlet and yet another usb charging port as well and you can actually close that up for a more cleaner look too if you didn't want people seeing what was in there so I like that too. So overall, interior quality is definitely practical. It will get the job done. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the tech. And so when it comes to that infotainment screen, it is an eight inch color touchscreen display that comes standard across the board. Bluetooth and audio streaming also coming standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well factory navigation system is going to come with the touring trim level and up although as long as you have a smartphone you don't need that because the android auto apple carplay after all there is a cabin talk intercom system coming with the touring trim level and up so i can't show that to you guys because we have the special edition but essentially it's going to pick up on the driver's voice and then kind of project it into the rear of the pilot which is pretty cool you can yell at the kids extra loud if you wanted to do want to also mention honda has some really cool clock options if you chose to display that up on that infotainment screen always enjoy looking at them and of course you can check out your radio information up there as well and so when it comes to the sound systems of the honda pilot i will say seven speakers is going to come with the exl and special edition that we have today but if you were to go with any of the other trim levels, you're actually gonna get a 10 speaker premium sound system with 590 watts and a subwoofer. But again, not the one we have today. But having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out our seven speaker sound system that we have here today. Actually not that bad. Seven speakers, it's not that bad in the pilot. It does a good job. Clarity was plenty fine. 
of course with that upgraded sound system you're going to get a bit more bass if anything i would say this that's what this sound system was lacking a little bit but clarity was plenty fine for what the pilot is it's not like you're going to need some crazy sound system for this thing but anyways last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the pilot in reverse you of course will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board with three different views which is pretty cool and that as always is going to lead us in this safety and so to start the honda pilot is an iihs top safety pick which pretty much says it all right there front side side curtain airbags do come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard yet again across the board honda sensing this is going to include a collision mitigation braking system road departure mitigation system adaptive cruise control lane keep assist forward collision warning lane departure warning a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and automatic high beams then as well and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the pilot very quick to 60 for its class that's probably the first thing that stood out to me this thing is dang quick for a three row suv very good braking as well 60 to 0 and 120 feet is plenty respectable plenty of space in this thing really if i were to compare this generally compared to the other three row suvs in this class i would say this is the one to get if you enjoy driving dynamics because the other ones are more geared towards getting from point a to point b this is geared towards doing that still but having a little bit of fun while you're doing it but the only constructive criticism i guess i could say and i guess there's a reason honda did this was with the elimination of those previous two trim levels this thing is seven thousand ish dollars more than the previous model year so if you're looking to get into the honda pilot at a lower price maybe look at the 2021s but if you're looking for more standard features 2022 has definitely got you covered but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.